victims trapped in their homes. The whole point of this video is to get to where I've arrived at now, and that is to find the link where if you guys would like to donate to the victims of Hurricane Ian or the first responders, I found that link. So I went on a journey from where we're at here on the east coast of Florida over to the west coast of Fort Myers. Uh, we toured a little bit of the devastation that happened. So that's all in this video, but the most important part is this link right here. And this link will take you directly to where you can donate to Florida Disasters Fund. That, that's a fund that goes directly to the people that were impacted by Hurricane Ian. Also, they are waiving the 3% administration fee that they normally take from each donation. That means 100% of your donations are going to go to the victims and or first responders that are out there helping the victims with water and supplies. Uh, that's going to go directly to them, 100% of it. So that was the whole point of this video. I don't want to put this at the end, even though it's the end of the day. Uh, I just wanted to put it up front. So this way, if you clicked out, at least you had a chance to say, hmm, maybe I'll donate a little bit. A little bit from everybody who's watching can go a long way. With that being said, let's get to the rest of the video. All right, we're here at the Hard Rock Stadium in the outer parking lot. And what's going on is definitely a sight to see. Uh, all the South Florida law enforcement agencies have come together to head over in a convoy over to the other coast of Fort Myers Beach area. That's where Hurricane Ian devastated a lot of the coastline and a lot of the residential area over there. What we have here is some of the local agencies bringing out their uh, resources to help out. Uh, you see behind me, FIU brought this monster of a truck and you can just see things from mobile command centers all the way from boats to high water rescue vehicles. Um, you have two counties so far out here that I see, Broward County, which is a little bit north of the Hard Rock Stadium, and then you also have uh, Miami-Dade County out here. So pretty awesome sight to see all of South Florida law enforcement agencies coming together in an effort to go and assist on the other coast. What'd you guys bring out from FIU? All right, we have our emergency response vehicle. This is a vehicle that we use for, that we utilize during any type of emergency, whether it be to rescue victims during an active shooter incident or to help render humanitarian aid, such as the mission that we're going on, to rescue people in flooded areas. So you guys are driving this all the way over to the other coast? Yes, sir. We're going to the West Coast along with the contingency of uh, different agencies. Outstanding. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Here's how it'll roll. The entire operation goes as slow as the slowest vehicle does. You can't break away. We are going I-75 to Daniels Parkway. Daniels Parkway, we're going to go east. We're going to take a left at Six Mile Cypress to the, to the arrival part, which is the uh, baseball stadium. You do not need to get out of your cars. The head of each group just needs to have the list of those who are attending to, to check in with FDLE. When that happens, there is a gas depot at that site. Everybody, all equipment should top off at that site. What's gonna happen then is we are gonna get paired up with Fort Myers PD, that's part of our mission, and Cape Coral PD. They are gonna take us to what we are gonna create as the Miami-Dade County Base Camp. Our, our, our goal is to keep us all together and get missions in and out of there for the next two weeks. My understanding, or the hopes are, is that hot meals will start served by the latest tomorrow night. There'll be showers and everything else. But again, everybody needs to be ready to go for 72 hours. There's a possibility we may move. If you haven't heard, all the hospitals are done. They're closed, they're moving people out. So we're, we're kind of gonna have to be a little fluid with where we go as far as if they move us around. But the whole goal over the next couple weeks is to have this base camp for the Miami-Dade response. So with that, I'll turn it over to President Chief Noel Pratt, who's the head of the Dade Chiefs Association. Uh, first and foremost, thank you all for volunteering to do this. We don't know what you all are going to see out there, so make sure you prepare your minds, your bodies, and your souls for out there. Our mission is to make sure that they're comfortable as much as possible. Um, just like uh, Chief Hudak said, within the first 72 hours, you have to make sure that you're self-sufficient. 
Um, I believe that was pushed out through your various agencies so that you understood exactly what to bring and how to prepare yourself. Um, this is a Miami-Dade County Association Chiefs of Police thing in, in, in connection with the Florida Police Chiefs Association. This is just the first phase. So once you all come back, we're gonna be sending more folks out there to help and assist. So once again, we appreciate it. Um, we're getting ready to talk to the media and let them know exactly what you guys are gonna be doing out there to help the folks up there in Northern Florida. Today, I'm off. I am not working, I'm not in official capacity, so I am driving over with the convoy. I might stop by um, just to wish them well because they're gonna be staying there for the length of about two weeks. I decided to come over. My friend lives across the way over here. His house got damaged pretty bad, so I'm just gonna check on him, see if he needs anything. It's only about an hour drive. Uh, I'm off today, so I decided to make the drive. I heard that they were doing this roll call here for the convoy to come out. So I was like, hey, why not come and show you guys? And something that I can offer is you guys, uh, the audience, the Nod Squad that is looking is like, man, how do we get involved? How can I help out with, with the efforts over here? I'm gonna see if maybe we can make contact with Fort Myers PD or a representative from over there. Maybe give us, the, they give me a link where they can, you guys can send donations or an address if you wanna send water or something. I don't know if, the, if, if stuff's gonna be shipped over there. Apparently they're without power, um, so it, I don't know how, how things are gonna work as far as that. Now you might be thinking, how are all these police officers gonna be used on the other side? This is out of their jurisdiction. This is about an hour and a half, some, some jurisdictions two hours away. How are they gonna be used? Well, right now Fort Myers PD and other agencies around the area have been working around the clock. When a disaster happens like this, there's no time off, so there's no breaks. So these officers will come in and assist and help facilitate anything that they need. They might not be responding to calls per se. Um, they might, who knows? But they will definitely take over some traffic positions or handing out water or manning areas where it need to be manned where the local agency is, maybe they just need a break. So they're going over there to assist in that capacity. They're also gonna be going over there to help out with the rescue efforts. There's been teams going over, fire departments, police departments, just to everybody, I, on the way over here, I've been seeing a lot of people with gas containers, uh, generators that are just civilians. So Florida gets a lot of uh, flack for being kind of crazy and, and people weird, uh, you know, having pet alligators and just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, that term Florida man. I can say this about Florida is that when a disaster happens, whether it be all the way down in the Keys or all the way up in the Panhandle, um, everyone kind of comes together as a community, as a state, and they, they join in a helping hand and pitch in however they can. So as we're entering Lee County where the brunt of the damage is, we got a, an alert that went over the phone, kind of like those uh, Amber Alerts that take over your phone, and it just said uh, about a water distribution site and gave details on where to find it. So that's pretty cool where now they're using technology to reach the people of the, in the masses, pretty cool stuff. So we're arriving 
travel here at the Twins Minor League facility. This is where all the first responder vehicles are staged. You have different kinds of vehicles here. You have fire rescue vehicles, ambulance vehicles. You have big mobile emergency command centers that are parked out here. Uh, different agencies from all throughout the state I see that are represented here. You have helicopters landing in the baseball field. Many different ambulance services out here. I also saw forest park rangers, fish and wildlife. You got big gas tankers out here that are pumping gas into these emergency vehicles so that when they're low, they can just come here, fuel up, and head back out and answer calls for service. So you have some federal, you have state, and you have local agencies that are here. Tonight, CBS News is learning the number of people who lost their lives to what was Hurricane Ian could be at least 76, with more than a million people still without power and countless others with homes totally destroyed. In Fort Myers Beach, which took a direct hit, local officials say 90% of that town is effectively gone. The death toll in Florida jumped again today, and hundreds of thousands are still without power tonight as crews desperately search for victims trapped in their homes. All right, so a couple days before I left, uh, did a video for my job and it kind of blew up on our platforms. And a lot of people are asking uh, to have a follow-up video. So even though I'm off, uh, today I came by the command post here to meet up with Lieutenant Tamron. There he is right there. You guys, he left me hanging. Oh, it's all right. I'm it's off right. duty, so he doesn't give me daps. <laughs> he doesn't know me. I, I'm paying attention to what's going on over oh, here. I apologize. So. Uh, met up with Lieutenant Tamron to, to kind of get a follow-up of what's been happening and uh, he's been kind enough to uh, escort us around real quick and give us a tour of what uh, has been happening and he is going to be working on getting a landing site for those donations or if you guys uh, want to uh, donate any kind of funds or, or what, what they don't want is people coming over here and an influx of people coming over here and causing a little more chaos to the area because right now as you see behind us there's cars and there's people walking they're just trying to get everyone out so to bring stuff in and unload they're they're, they're trying to identify a centralized location where they can bring that stuff out but for now we're going to go um in the high water rescue uh, response vehicle with lieutenant tamron and kind of take a look at uh some of the impact that hurricane ian had here in fort myers beach So all the sand that we see here on the street uh, piled up was actually on the road. Today's the first time that we're actually able to see the road. They, uh, the back loads, uh, back loaders were here, spent the last two, three days moving all this sand so all emergency vehicles any size could come in. Even with this vehicle that I'm driving, it was, it was difficult to come out here from how much sand we had on the road.
So the LT and I were speaking, and uh, even though we live on the other side of the coast, we come over here. I, I know I come to this side of the coast maybe every other month, sometimes every month, to come visit the beaches over here in this area. And he knows about these steps because right next to it, you were saying that there's your... It's uh, called Red Coconut Campground, and we come here with, my, with families every year. And there was, a, there was a house there before that was uh, that I would park right in, right uh, adjacent to it. And all, all this is gone, even across the street, that's also part of the campsite. And uh, er everything's gone, as you can see. types of calls or, or things that you're running into. I see a lot of people leaving with coolers and suitcases. Like right, right now everybody's devastated. They're, they just want to leave. Um, some people did weather the storm here. Some are just arriving today to find what's left of their properties if they find anything as you can see on these videos. It's very sad. Uh, especially the elderly trying to uh, ask us to take them to their homes and because they can barely walk and it's a big stretch you can only come in from one side of the island now the other side we had to close because the bridge had moved um and you know you take them to their homes and they don't find anything or their home's not there or half of it is gone that's that, that's the worst part of this whole thing Back at camp with LT, thank you for taking us on the tour and showing us anytime. what you've been up to and what what the sites are up here. Uh, if you don't know, I was telling LT, I'm like, man, I missed my son's baseball game for this, and he's like, so did I. So nine, did he. Nine, nine o'clock, I missed uh, our, our, our uh, Diamond Dream 6U team, but my son understands, so does my family, what we're doing. Yeah, so thank you for everything man sacrificing staying over here missing the missing the kids game that's right now you're gonna have to take them to the toy store or ice cream store <laughs> something missing the family that's for sure all right so thank you again man appreciate it you stay safe up here appreciate it thank you man well, there's not much not much you can say the whole the video the footage kind of speaks for itself it's uh, amazing to see how a storm can come through and just change everything and just wipe it away you don't realize how powerful water is a lot of this damage all these cars that got flipped was because the tide uh, rushed in and the water levels rose rapidly picked up cars spun them around I mean you see the cars flipped over uh, that with wind gusts is just a nasty situation my heart go out to everyone that's been involved or who has family that's involved uh, thank you to all the first responders um, that are out here first and foremost the locals and then the, those that came from uh, around the state and out of state thank you guys for what you do you guys are true heroes and hopefully Fort Myers gets back on its feet pretty fast all right guys uh, we'll, we'll save the sign off for this one it's another serious one so we'll save the sign off for this one we'll see you on the next one